guys, welcome back to my channel. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing kind of not a full face of makeup, but I'm going to show you guys some tips and tricks on how to improve your bronzer, your contour, your blush, your highlight, and I'm also going to do a lip, um, like a really dark bronzy type of lip, because I really want to show you guys how you can um, fix anything if you feel like you don't blend well enough or like something's just not looking right in your makeup. I want to give you guys some really easy tips to make it look really beautiful so your full face will be perfect. If you guys are, um, you know, let's just get right into this video. <laughs> so whenever I do, so I have my base down, I have my foundation, concealer, powder, brows, and mascara. I'm not really going to do anything on my eyes today because I'm just trying to go for a more like glowy kind of natural look like that because if I do eyeshadow, I can go really hardcore. So I'm just going to be focusing on my cheeks and my lips today. So I'm going to go into my Marc Jacobs um, Omega Bronzer in the shade Tantrix. Um, this bronzer is a luxury bronzer for sure. It's huge. <laughs> um, if you guys are looking to not spend um, $49 on a bronzer, I would recommend the Butter Bronzer from Physicians Formula. You can find it in most drugstores. So basically I'm going to take my Morphe Wi-Fi brush. I'm just going to kind of coat my brush in the powder. Always tap off excess. If you guys are scared of fallout, tap off the excess. It will do your life wonders. So basically, when you're doing bronzer, you want to go to your cheekbone and you want to find where your brow bone is. So when you find that, you're like, okay, there's my brow bone. You want to take your brush. I have a mirror here, so if I'm like looking there, I'm sorry. But I'm going to find my cheekbone. I'm going to take the bronzer and I'm just going to start bronzing right there. If you bronze too low, it's going to make your face look weird. If you bronze way too high, it's going to get in your highlight section, which isn't good else also. So you want to find where that little bone is and just start blending. I recommend always blending upwards using circular motions. And don't put on so much product at the get-go. I personally like to add a little by little and just start building up that coverage to really get the pigmentation that you want. And as you can see, the bronzer looks very beautiful. It's blended out nicely. And it's not making your face look weird. It's making your face look really more like sculpted and give it more definition. That's the whole point of bronzing. But contouring will do much more. I'm done with bronzing. I like to go into contouring next. I like um, two different types of palettes. I like my Kat Von D shade light palette for sure. It's one of my favorites. And I've also been liking... Yeah, I've been liking my Lorac Take Me Tantigo. Tantigo? I'm not really sure has four little shades like this, two are matte and two are shimmer. I think I'm going to mix these kind of two together to create a little, uh, what do you call it, like a, like a mixture of two, I don't know, I'm just going to mix them together honestly. And for this I'm going to go with my Morphe Y2 brush, I like it because as this brush was more like round top, really like fluffy and stuff, this has a more like um, kind of pointed, like it, it has like a V shape curved up, you know, and it really helps get that nice like contour you want. So that's why I really do enjoy it. So first I'm going to go with my Shane Light palette. I'm going to take this middle shade right here. I'm going to take just a little bit because this has so much fallout and the coverage is amazing. So I'm going to go again, find that cheekbone, and just start blending upwards. Like always, you don't want to start with so much product because you don't want it to cake up or get all orangey and weird. So just start little and then build your way up. Once again, just circular motions, always blend upwards. It will do you wonders. <laughs> I also like to blend a little bit up towards my um, like hairline and temple area. It just helps the bronzer not look like it's just like put in one spot. It looks like it's more blended around your face and it really does help. Also, the farther um, you hold your brush from the actual like so if you hold it like really here you're gonna put so much pressure and then may not blend as well so i recommend holding it towards the end of your brush because you have more control and it will really help when blending out stuff to make it like really nice and clean cut as you can see the side's looking really nicely i'm really liking how it's turning out so far after i'm done um con contouring and bronzing i like to cut it and i use powder for that so it it makes the line really more um, straight and it kind of cleans up any fallout or harsh blending that it may happen so it really makes your face look clean cut and nice. So I'm going to take my RCMA No Color Powder. This is probably one of my favorite powders I've ever used. It's only $12 and I recommend um, getting it at beautylish.com. They have a lot of um, indie brands and really cool makeup on there so I recommend getting it there. And you get free shipping over $35 which I feel like is really like, a good deal. So I'm going to take that on my Morphe White Bulb brush. 
I'm just gonna start right like at the end of where I contoured and then just kind of push it out and create this white powder line so I can really cut my contour and make it look clean and not messy. Because even a girl like me who's really good at makeup will always mess up on her contour, believe me. And the same to the other side. And yes, this powder does have a lot of fallout, so be aware of that. Always step off the excess for sure with um, this type of powder because it does have a lot. And if you want, you could also use this type of powder on your nose if you're contouring your nose. You can use this type of powder as well. It works beautiful. Also like to use it to set my under eyes a lot because it's just such a beautiful powder. Blush is kind of a hard thing, sorry if my chair is squeaking, but blush is kind of like a hard thing to really find your good match at because either you go too dark or you go too pink and it just doesn't really match your skin tone. So for my skin tone, I really like those peachy like undertone pinks and they're really beautiful. But today I'm going to go in with my Becca and Jaclyn Hill collection. You have two highlighters, three blushes. So I'm basically going to go in with this middle shade called, um, called Amaretto. It's a really beautiful, like, mm, it looks brown in the pan, but like it has a really beautiful, like, peachy undertone to it, which, like, looking at it, you would not even notice that. But I'm gonna go with that, and I'm gonna start out by kind of making, like, a smirky face when I do this, like a, like a, mm, and then finding the apples on my cheeks and just taking that and blending upwards, like, up. Does that make sense? You'll see when I do it, but I'm just gonna do that. And having a slanted brush like this really helps because you can really just like sweep it upwards and really get a good um, like form going. And blush is really like opinionated for a lot of people so if you want to add a lot you can. If you don't you want to go more natural that's totally cool but like once again just like build your coverage up and don't go too fast or like too much at one time. Because believe me, from experience, you can go overload very quickly, for sure. And that is all for blush. But if you do find yourself in a situation like that, where you're like, oh my gosh, I put so much on, what do I do? Oh my gosh, my makeup's wrong! Go with your powder brush. It's an easy trick in the books. You just go over, kind of pat it over. It'll diffuse most of the color if you did put a lot on. And it'll just help give you back that natural glow and that's really all for blush let's move on it's a highlighter my favorite so of course if you guys know me i am like a highlighter whore i have so many highlighters i really should do a collection on that that'd be really cool but today i'm going to be using two actually three highlighters because i'm mixing so many but i'm going to go in with my um, anastasia beverly hills glow kit in the shade sun dipped Probably one of my favorite because the skin tone, not the skin tones, the undertones really match my skin and I really do like it. I'm going with my, guys I'm mumbling so much, my Morphe Y14 brush. I'm going to go with the shade Summer, which is this really beautiful yellow undertoned highlighter. Oh my gosh, that was so much fallout. You guys should have seen. I'm like right by my window and I literally see like a dust of like highlighter. So, same thing, you're going to find where the light hits your face. I know where it hits it because I've done it for so long. But if you don't know, go in front of a light and see where it hits it. It's usually kind of like around this area, like the top of your cheekbone, like right above your blush almost. And you're just going to find that and you're just going to start blending it out. Make sure not to go into your blush or your contour because if you're going that far down, then you know you're not doing it right. And then it'll really kind of like mess things up a little bit. So I'm going to go in that shade on both sides. Once again, light hand, you know, you can always go back and add more. I feel like a lot of people put too much to start out with and then it just ends up going really bad. So I'm going to go with the next shade, um, Moonstone. It's a more pinky undertone highlighter, but it's really beautiful as well. I'm also going to take the highlighter down the bridge of my nose, like always, on my Cupid's bow. You guys know it's right here in your lip. And I do take a little bit and make a little squiggly thing on my forehead. I feel like it looks cool. And I'm gonna go in with another highlighter. I'm just like that. I'm gonna go with the Ofra. 
I was like Ofra, the Ofra um, highlighter in shade Everglow. Nikki Tutorials collabed with Ofra. She made this and a liquid lipstick. I'm going to be using very very soon. And I'm going to use um, this really beautiful light, um, almost starstruck like white shade. This is so pigmented, guys. Like it makes your highlighter like look like beaming like you could see me across the room wearing this it's crazy so i'm taking a more dense brush because i don't want to pick up so much product and have it like overdo everything so i'm just taking once again a little bit of time if you guys want to highlight your inner corner too that would look really pretty with this type of highlighter because it is like so pigmented and as you can see the highlighter is just really beautiful really starstruck the last thing we're going to do is just go back in with that powder brush and kind of just buff in or sweep away the excess powder that we had um, in the beginning to clean up our contour so it doesn't look too messy. Or like a white shadow under your contour, which would be really weird. I'm just taking that powder brush I used and blending it all out. And I like to blend my contour in with it. So the final step in this whole look is lipstick. I personally love matte lipsticks way more than... Um, like glossy or like demi matte or like semi finish lipsticks. I feel like if you get a liquid matte lipstick, it'll last longer. It'll look better on your skin, and I feel like it just it really look look better on your lips. How about that? <laughs> and I really do love long lasting lipsticks like that. So today I'm going in with the Ofra Long Lasting Liquid Lipstick in the shade Coven. It is a really beautiful dark brown. I did um a review on this. Um for Nikki's, Nikki Tutorials collection with them, so I have tried it on a few times, but every single time it just, it's beautiful. It's like, it's like a shimmer liquid lipstick that's matte. Well, okay, it's like a shimmer liquid lipstick that kind of dries matte and lasts super long, which is like really crazy to me, but like amazing at the same time. So I'm gonna try it on for you guys. I personally, I personally like to start with my bottom lip first and then work up to my top lip. Like right off the bat, do you see that pigmentation? Like it is crazy good. I love it. Really easy to blend too. I like to go in my inner corner and just like drag it out to get my lip shake down as well. I'm gonna make a little line right in the middle just to kind of like separate the, the two sides of my lips, I guess. And then carefully just work your way down. And there you have it. This is Coven Red right Lips. Usually liquid lipsticks like this, um, they're usually very opaque so you don't have to add a second layer, but if you, if there's some, sometimes like sheer or you just don't like the coverage you're getting, I'd wait for the first layer to dry and then add a second layer on top just so you can be more pleased with it or whatever you want to do, but I am in love with how this is looking, I am in love with how this look turned out, and I think it's really beautiful. I want to say thank you guys so much for watching this video, my camera is literally about to die because I saw the little blinky thing, I'm like, oh jeez. So I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching this video, I hope you really enjoyed it, and I hope the card just said it was full so I don't like delete stuff, but um, yeah, I hope you guys take some tips and tricks from this video and use it in your daily makeup routine, or give it to someone who needs the advice, but I hope you guys really did enjoy this video, and I'll see you guys next week with another video. Have a good day. Bye, guys.